It wasn't exactly clear how much of a disaster the moon swatch was. We thought it was good. It wasn't clear how bad it was until this, until the Blanc Pond 50 Fathom swatch. This destroys the moon swatch. 100%. What's up, watch fam? I am Christian, the curator of the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop. My name is Michael, and this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Terrific. More uh -huh. about our friends over at Squarespace later. Today's is a great conversation all about what is you know, pretty groundbreaking news in the watch industry. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of speculation even back when the original Moon Swatch was released that something like this would happen at some point. Did you know? Um, bef before anyone else? I feel like, no. or not before anybody else, but I feel like you said to me, like, it's the 50 Fathoms, it's next. Oh, that's what I thought. Yeah, oh, well, we'll okay. talk all about this, you know, as, as the video kind of unpacks. Um, but this is this is really big, right? We're recording this on, on, on Thursday the 7th, so two days before the release itself. So we currently sitting here do not know um, if there will be these crazy lines like they're yes. for the Omega and that's a, yes. a really big conversation we'll get into later. I knew we couldn't get out a video in time. I know that we're a week late. I, yes. I, I, I was able to release uh, my thoughts on this that were pretty extensive uh, over on over on our community over at the Zero. Link is down below if you're not a member already. And, and I released it bright and early, like 9 a.m. And, and the, the point was, by then already, you already had retail resellers on eBay for $1,300 or $1,400, Ooh, right? Three, four times the price. It right. was crazy. And, and I didn't even know that, but one of one of our members actually had pointed it out to me. And, and I was like, holy, I didn't even think to check eBay. It was right. so unbelievable, right. you know? Um, if you're not already a member on the Zero, by the way, go ahead down below and, and take a look at that link. Um, I know it's not free, but you get so much credit into the Theo and Harry leather shop that it basically is free every year. Um, we're building a beautiful community over there and I hope to see you over there. If you do sign up, shoot me a DM and I'd love to chat about watches with you. I'm looking forward to it. See you over there. Yep. This is an awesome conversation, very dynamic about Swatch Group, the Swatch company, meaning the watches themselves, yep. and uh, and now Blanc Paul. So very exciting to have this discussion. This is an amazing release. There's a bunch of amazing things to say about it. There's also some hefty cons, but at the end, there is a much bigger picture of, okay, so we're seeing something radical, like you did a very radical thing. Yes. But with that, makes everything else in between less mm -hmm. radical. Yeah. And I feel like the Swatch Group as a whole is going to be like Blanc Pond, Omega, yeah. whatever big brands are talking to, Longines, being like, okay, we're going to change everything because this is working really well. I, I, I agree. First thing we should start off with before we get into this exact watch would be the Moon Swatch, okay? Yeah. Um, when the Moon Swatch was released, you know, it was a big surprise to the entire industry. No one knew what to expect. Nothing like this had ever been done before, at least to my recollection. No, and no, and yeah. ultimately, it turned out to be a massive commercial success. I believe... To the point where people were stabbed over it. Literally, someone was stabbed over yes. the Moon Swatch, right? Uh, in these lines. It was a global phenomenon, right? Mm -hmm. On the numbers, uh, Swatch in 2022 reported $1.2 billion of, 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 of operating profit. It's unbelievable. Um, their numbers were lower than they projected because they did not expect uh, China to still be locked down. Uh -huh. So they did 1.2 billion in, in, in profit without China, which was unbelievable. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. crazy numbers. And as much as 20% of that entire profit was Moonswatch profit. Wow. So that that's really because they cost three cents to make. It's unbelievable. It right. costs nothing to make, and um, and it was truly just a, a massive financial success. Now beyond the financial success which is obvious, yes. even on a PR level, it was really interesting. It, it impacted Omega Moonwatch sales. The Omega Moonwatch sales increased exponentially. And, um, and and even though it was not a move that Omega themselves loved, yes. the parent company made them do it, they ended up reaping a lot of the benefit from it. Right. It's one of those things where as a brand, you're like, it, it, it hurts our brand values. It's not what we want. It's not this. And then your sales start going up. And you're like, but I really think if we did it in a different <laughs> color, you can use moonshine gold or whatever right. it may be. The problem yeah. with the moon swatch is that the, while the first release, the first batch was really, really awesome and inventive and fun and beautiful and playful, it started to go down from there because yes. all of that inventiveness seemed to uh, go to the wayside as Swatch began to just get lazy. They started to just put like gold hands with different things on, on the gold hands. On the gold hands. It was right. very, very silly. So when I when we heard, or rather step up, backing up from when we heard, so that kind of made me feel a little bit um, dis. 
you're not happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a little bit not happy uh, about about the future of of this potential, right? Of this Swatch, uh, Swatch watch, you know, X uh, major Swatch brand like Blancpain, Breguet, Omega, Longines, uh, Tissot, all these other brands. It was right? like, oh, you did an amazing release. You made amazing watches, and now you're just going to phone it in. You're right. going to change one part, way cheaper, no colors, no tooling, or anything like that. Nothing all that interesting. Right. So I was really not very excited to see what would happen next. Even though the, there was a grand, grand potential to make a ton of money, yes, but really to revive, uh, uh, to revive some of these brands, yeah. um, I, you know, I, I think that the Swatch Group, um, and we'll get into the Blanc Pond and why I think that the Blanc Pond was a good choice. You know, the the Swatch Group, I don't think has done a great job at at you know giving the Fifty Fathoms. As an example, which is a historically important watch, which is a great quality yes. watch, they've done a good job in the development of the product itself. But I don't think they've done a good job giving it the the global, you know, marketing support that it needs to become or to hold its space as an icon. That is the end big, big discussion because they can do that in two ways. The easy way is what they're doing now, right? But we can also get much more complex and much more a, a way to anger people. Right. Much more angry ways. Right. I don't know how I can phrase that, but we'll talk about it in a second. I, I knew they wouldn't go with Longines because Longines is too close of a competitor to Omega. You knew yep. they weren't going to go downstream like to Tissot. Um, so you said, okay, well, what is upstream? Well, Breguets are actually very hard to make. Like, Breguets are going to be hard to fake. I do think <laughs> yeah. at some point that will happen. Yep. I think that the Breguet tradition will be, will be effectively manufactured in plastic at some really? point. Really? I think they'll still be expensive, but they'll be swatch and they'll be super collectible and they'll be amazing. Mm -hmm. I do think that will happen. Very similar to, do you remember being a child? I remember when you were a little boy, yeah. and remember, like in like a kindergarten, those clocks that had all like the plastic clocks, the mechanical plastic. Clock, oh yeah, of course. And you would move the hand, and then the gears would move. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's what we will eventually see out of Moon Swatch. Out of, uh, out, of Moon Swatch, out of out of. Swatch potential collaboration. Blanc is a brand with with very rich history that almost died during the Quartz Crisis, right? Yes. Um, I have. Not really own many Blanc Pond in my life because I, I haven't either. You've got them in the 80s, but they're quite small. Um, again, the Theo and Harris Vintage Watch Shop specializes in vintage watches from the 1950s up until the 19, you know, 80s into the 90s a little bit. But yeah, but you know, we're usually in in Rolex and in Patek and Omega and in Tudor and 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 in brands like that. Brands that always were manufacturing just high quantities of great watches, but because yeah. Blanc Pond struggled in the 60s and the 70s and it uh, basically died for a long basically time. Yeah, died, right. We don't see vintage bonk pong which has presented a, a, an uphill battle for them you yeah, know, now of course, right because you're not really building on this you have a rich history but you're not building on like a constant tradition yeah you know um if you're interested in shopping vintage watches by the way go take a look at the theo and harris vintage watch shop down below yes the blanc pond 50 fathoms was a perfect layup it is a you know Fundamentally, you know, simple dive watch. Again, fundamentally simple in in, in like design of to course. execute. There wasn't anything too magnificent on complication. It's still a huge name and for watch nerds, I guess, at that point. It has huge historical significance, like the moon watch. Yep. But now this is where it becomes fascinating. Like the moon watch is already a favorite in the Swatch group. It already gets a ton of press. The 50 Fathoms is not. Right. The 50 Fathoms is a bit of a, you know... The 50 Fathoms is hard to get, slow to get. I think it's expensive as two moon watches. And then yeah. it's just, it doesn't have the same name. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't, it, you're right, it doesn't have the same name. Yeah. And that's kind of silly because the 50 Fathoms is a fantastic watch that was released as one of, I don't know if it was the first, they claim it was the first, but one of the first, uh, uh, you know, modern dive watches with, um, you know, with rotational bezel, uh, with the Submariner, with the Zodiac Seawolf. You know, it's a historical watch. Incredibly, yeah. So it made perfect sense to go that way. Yes. Then when I saw the promotion, I said, okay, well, is it going to be any good? And back to the laziness remark, I felt that, you know, in all likelihood, it may be crap because Omega has been, uh, was watching, been mailing it in or phoning it in yeah. with the moon watches. They do a gray one. And then I was like, oh, shit, this is going to be bad. And they're releasing right. it on the 9th, which is my birthday. And I said, well, they're going to ruin my birthday. And that's not good either. Right, right. Because right. so then you'll be mad. You then I'm going to be really, really mad. Then I'm going to have to give Swatch a call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, so I was a little bit skeptical. Yes. And then they they release the watches themselves in reviews on a couple of different publications, Hodinkee being one of them. Yes. Uh, and, and we found out the watches are fantastic. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. You are a little domain master. Yeah, I, I, I have been a Squarespace loyalist for uh, nine, almost nine years now. I certainly wouldn't have my business had it not been for Squarespace. When I launched my first business, Theo and Harris, I was in college. I really had no money at all. I could not afford a web developer like probably many of you. And even if I had the money to afford it, I certainly didn't have the money to waste it, right? right. And Squarespace offered the assistance that I needed, right? Yeah. I was able to choose through a bunch of just beautiful functional templates and build what would ultimately 
ultimately become a great, beautiful company. Without the ease of development, without mm -hmm. the beauty of the development, um, no one would have ever taken me seriously. I never would have gotten off the ground, uh, actually. So it's, yeah. it's incredible. I owe my business to Squarespace. Yeah, and Squarespace has amazing tools like their new Fluid Engine, so you can drag and drop images and text. You can schedule blogs so you don't have to worry about them later in the day, later in the night. Mm -hmm. And finally, if you have a retail shop or hope one day to have a retail shop, Squarespace will grow with you with their point of sale system. Totally. I don't just recommend that you join Squarespace if you are starting a new business, but if you have your own company already, I definitely suggest making an account and just poking around because I can almost guarantee you that Squarespace can offer you a better service uh, with a better website. And um, I mean, that's just that's just good business. Yeah. So you can save 10% off your order of a website or a domain by checking out the link below and using our code Theo Harris at checkout. First off, big watch, at least for us. 42.3 millimeters in mm -hmm. diameter, 14.4 millimeters thick, mm -hmm. bioceramic, mm -hmm. not ceramic, just right. important to note, well, that is plastic. Plastic. <laughs> yes. Uh, as you may know, bioceramic is our provider. You and I are like, oh, it's plastic. It's plastic. It's plastic. Uh, it comes in a few different colors. We have Arctic Ocean, which is a beige and orange, my favorite. Pacific Ocean, yellow and black. Atlantic Ocean, blue, black. Indian Ocean, green, black. Antarctic Ocean, gray, gray. Absolutely fantastic. It uses the System 51 movement. Which, Super cool. As, and do you know why? Be, the, there will never be, right? There will yes. never be a quartz Blancpain, right? Yep. Since, since 1735 or whatever the year was, Blancpain has never made a quartz watch and there will never be one. That yes. is a famous quote from Jean-Claude Biver, uh, basically the man responsible for reviving Blancpain after they uh, basically went defunct um, in the second half of the 20th century and when it was revived by the Swatch Group. A man that is amazing at grabbing incredibly captivating catchphrases or like ethos about a brand. He's Hublot inspiring. is fusion. Yeah. Um, Blancpain is no quartz, we refuse. Everybody else did, yeah. but not us. Yeah. So that's very cool. I'm very, very glad that Swatch took care of that or respected that. Yes. Because they could have easily been like, okay, well, they did one, but it's Swatch, it's not Blanc. Right. So that's amazing. Then when we look at the back, obviously System 51 always has a visible case back, mm -hmm. but we have absolutely gorgeous case back art. Super cool. Lasered on pictures of the ocean yeah. and then a piece of each ocean on the back. Yes. And the System 51 movement is famous because it's the fully it's a fully automated process to make it. Yes. It uses one screw. Everybody freaks out about one screw, but they just use different materials to right. do other screws. Right. And finally, the NATO strap is made out of recycled fishing nets. Fishing I think. nets. Yeah, they took right. my dad's they off the boat. <laughs> they just stole them. Sorry, we have to make a watch. Yeah. So, uh, you know, even obviously. Oh, yes. Sorry, there's one more thing. No. And it is water resistant to 50 fathoms, 91 feet. 90, which is the original. Yes. Which is, how, how cool is that, right? Yes. They haven't been doing that and they haven't done that in a long time because 50 Fathoms, the name of the watch, ultimately ended up being a, a depth that was surpassed. Right? It, yeah, it's, it's kind of awkward when the, then the Samariners are... It's kind of like the mill gauss. Exactly. It's not, it's no longer resistant to a thousand gauss. It's got to be more, right? Everyone's doing more now. You exactly. Know, you name right. the watch after it's, you know. It's so, oops. Kind El Primero of... comes out second. Exactly. <laughs> it's the best. You know, yeah. yeah. So, um, so even independent, I, and I love your your catch about, about Blanc Pond never having made a quartz watch and there will never be one. That was, was a great catch. I actually didn't realize it at first. Um, um, and, and that makes it all the better, for sure. Yeah. But even putting that on the shelf, okay, and just considering that, you know, Swatch uh, knew they had to take a slightly different approach with this than they did with Omega. You yes. need to keep the world on its feet a little bit, right? right. The p people are always going to be ready to chastise this, these collaborations. They're always going to be ready to hate them because they're cheap versions of watches that are truly great. They're yes. not cheap at all. With It's something that cheapens it. For example, like the chronograph made the moon swatch. Interesting. Right. This not being a cheap swatch quartz movement right. makes it interesting. Which is why, you know, there's going to be well, the integrated color, which is why they're integrating these these mechanical movements, right? They're just keeping people on their feet and it's fun and it's cool and it's exactly. and it's great. And and I, I think that this is I think that this is just I mean, brilliance a strong word. I think they, they did a brilliant job. Um, I, yeah. I really think they, they actually couldn't have done better. I mean, maybe you could have played around agree. with some colors and I, maybe there's a personal preference, but... We should say Swatch could have done better. Yes. That's the big note we'll, yes. we'll kind of expand to in a second. Yes. But yeah, they could have played around with colors. A big thing that they said is, well, we don't want to repeat colors. We right. want we don't want it to be another Moon Swatch like, re-release. Right. So that's why they did that. But I love the tributes they paid. I think they all kind of knocked it out of the park. To me, the no rad or the... Arctic Ocean is just exceptionally better than all of the others. That's an incredible watch. That's an absolutely beautiful yeah, it's watch. Wild.
Watches are unimportant to the time. They can't speed, slow, or stop it, and our phones tell it better. But as vessels for memories, they know few rivals. Okay, so amazing watch, we can't praise it enough, but once you think about it for a little bit longer, you get some obvious cons, and the obvious cons are really that it's a swatch at the same time. So that leads into the big succession scene I'm actually gonna reference later in this, because something big is going to change in the swatch group. But before we get there, $400 watch, mm. what do you think of that price tag? Keeping in mind, you can get actual mechanical watches that can be serviced that are made of steel and stuff for 400 bucks. Yeah. Listen, I, uh, the truth is, I thought this watch was $600. I don't know where I saw 600 Right before we sat down. Yeah, I, maybe yeah. I saw it in a different currency, I don't know, and I thought that it's 600 I thought it was not gross. I thought it was, you know, I mean, yeah, expensive, but like kind of fair. I mean, again, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, you know, I don't know. I think I'm really seeing this on a macro level mm. and understanding that like this is a blanc pawn. Like I know it's uh, not. Uh. I know understand that it's not. But there has to be a premium that goes along with the design, right? You're functionally okay, okay, licensing yeah. one of the most important designs in horology yes. and selling it, right? In a cheaper version, sure. Of but course, like, of course. The, the design alone is worth money. I think the Moon Swatch was cheap. I don't think it needed to be two ninety five. I, th I think the Moon Swatch could have easily been four hundred dollars. Wow, and I know okay. that sounds yeah, yeah. like a lot, but you know, and, I, and you're, frankly, right, you're not saying sh you're not saying it's undervalued. You're saying they could have pushed it up more. And, and I think it would have been fair. Yeah. You yeah, know, that's again, there's 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 a price tag associated even with the design, construction aside. Mm -hmm. Now we have we should have high standards for construction, even though it's a swatch, sure. right? Uh, uh, I think that one of the things that Danny Milton from Odinky pointed out was the the rotational bezel is was actually, actually nice. really nice, yeah. you know? Yeah. You definitely don't want a product. That's that's unacceptable. Right. Um, listen, when the System 51s are done, they're done. You throw them in the garbage. You you can't yeah, service right. them. They're glued right? together. So right. there's something about that too, like that, you know, that's, that's, you know, you have to understand that it's a swatch. You have to understand what it is. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's got to eat, right? Like this collaboration, if it happened where the two brands weren't owned by the same parent company would yes. be a lot more expensive. Oh, Because one public has to eat. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, now, Swatch is just saying, well, you don't have, I don't care if you eat, I'm the, I'm the daddy, and well, I, daddy eats. They, yeah, they would have had to made more, but they also probably would have never done it, for one. And two, since they are so focused on handmade watches and mm -hmm. stuff, been like, okay, well, we have to figure out how to make the case. And it has to be our It would have been a disaster. Like, well, it, what you're getting would be a plastic watch for $15,000 or something <laughs> right. like that. So right. For, for, so for $400, I think that this is actually a great watch. Um, I know there are better watches on a very objective level, uh, uh, you know, like... Um, uh, Casio, like Kendall, G-Shock, right. whatever it may be. You know, I mean, a Tissot Visidate isn't very far off in price, right? Right. Uh, these are better watches. I understand that. Um, but uh, I still think this is a great watch with great value. I think at $400, it's a it's a fun purchase. I know that maybe I'm sure that to plenty of people it's not a fun purchase. I understand the four hundred dollars money, blah 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 blah. But it's still in the in the world of watches. It's a fun purchase. It falls into that category. You know, I think uh, I think it's totally on par. I mean, there are great Casios at two hundred and at two fifty. You know, there are you know uh, you there's know, the Mr. G line at five thousand. Well, right, Casio. right. But yeah, even yeah. keeping it on the cheap end, like on the plastic end, digital end. You know, oh, I sure. think this is great. I think it's fucking great. I think. I think what happens here is people go into this being like, okay, well, it's $400. If, okay, well, I'll, let me split it up. People that aren't watch nerds mm -hmm. are like, okay, it's $400 at this watch store. This watch is 20 bucks, so this needs to be $380 better. That probably means it's a real watch. Right. Unless you get that across right away. No, this still is a swatch. Right. I think even to your point, it needs to be marketed that way. Like, no, it is a swatch still. Like, you can't... I don't know how they do the spring bars here or anything. Mm. I don't know how they do it on swatch. I believe they're actually functional spring bars. Well, oh, yeah, because it has uh, drilled lug holes. Yeah. I think that needs to be made clear right away. Not that they will make it clear on the site, but at purchase. And then I think watch nerds go into this thinking... You know when you go to, like, Six Flags and there's Bizarro mm. Man? Do you not know Six Flags? I, I've never been. <laughs> That's why I wanted to just jump up and just... Let's do a montage. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> you're holding me as we're flying down. <laughs> no, but essentially you go to Six Flags and it's like, it's Bizarro, which is, it's not super Bizarro Worlds. Uh, Opposites. Science. Yeah, yeah. It, you're like, that's not Superman, but it's kind of like that. Watch Nerds, it's like, well, it's not a 50 Fathoms, but like, it's signed by Blanc Pond. Like, they gave their signature. Right. 
but it's still like there are some faults then what do you mean i throw it away like yeah. that's not from this hero brand i have that's a weird juxtaposition between two things yeah i, I think system 51 is ranging from 195 dollars to 250 dollars. i think yeah. that this watch is twice as good like i think that you can you know on an objective you know uh, uh you know level maybe it's 20 or 30 or 40 percent better because you've got the you know the bezel and things like that maybe there, there's there's a better date window execution it's a better design watch sure. but but then you're know, factoring in the licensing factoring in the brand factoring in the, the historical design i you know th this makes it's a perfectly logical jump and they could have charged 500 and frankly they could have charged six but clearly swatch is looking at this from a different angle right they're not looking at it from how much can we rob from people on these watches they're not looking at it like that i yes i think I don't think there's a lot wrong with the price. They probably obviously could have gone lower, whatever it may be. I think the mindset that people have around these, the Moon Swatch and the, and the 50 Fathoms are, well, it has to, have, like, there must be something else. Right. And the realization that it is a swatch, mm -hmm. I think, throws people off. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, 91 meters water resistance for how long? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. what, happens in, what happens to plastic when you wear it a lot? Whatever right. it may be. Right. I think it's more of a consumer end where it's like, oh no, you're forgetting. If you wear two, then the first, then they don't break. If you wear two, yeah, I've heard that. <laughs> Not that I would have any idea. That mix up with people is is what gets people frustrated. Yes. they're like, well, the pusher fell off my moon swatch. They're like, right, because it's not an Omega Speedmaster. Right. It's a swatch. Right. That's why I do think, and, and you know, I haven't tested these watches, and and you know, I have to do like long term, you know, you have to go tests diving. And, you, you, know, have to yeah, right. you have to do that. Yeah, to find out the real longevity and quality. I do hope that they that they have good quality. I, I think that that's probably true. I think yeah. that if, I think that if the moon swatches were truly pieces of shit that broke everywhere, I don't think I would have the same opinion about them because I would have been overwhelmed with people commenting and, and talking about that. Just about the right. worst thing you could say about the moon swatch was the fact that on the blue early blue version, some of the blue was rubbing off on your skin. Yeah. Okay, that's probably a problem they fixed in this most recent version. I would imagine that's the truth. That is also something. It hasn't been released yet. There's not a lot of people wearing it. Those issues could have been what put it at the 285 price point. And now $400, they're like, okay, this is, right. you, you can have this longer, bit. this stronger, sure. it's better. Sure. So I think they did a great job. Now, on, on, a, on a larger level, right, what, what's going to happen? Um, again, this is Thursday. They're being released on Saturday. They're not being released online, only in Swatch Boutiques. And apparently they're getting very limited production. I, I, I do not believe that as many uh, 50 Fathoms will be manufactured as the Moon Swatch. Right. I also don't think that there will be the lines that the Moon Swatch had. I think there will be lines and people will want the Swatch. I already have yeah. them on eBay for $1,400. They're already listed. Really? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. They're already listed because someone's assuming I'll, I'll make the listing. Hopefully I'll, it'll sell and I'll go get it on Saturday. I'll wait on the line, you know, oh. to pick up my $1,000. Yep. You know, yep. but there's, there's an innocent explanation there. Uh, you know, what, what does success look like? Well, you have to have an understanding of, of what success looks like. You can't just make up a number or say, well, we need to do better than last time. That's not even fair to this to this launch, right? Especially because the 50 Fathoms is not the Speedmaster. Well, you're right. And, and even going further than that, like the Swatch Group has, in, has invested pittens in the 50 Fathoms line, of right? Course. Yeah. In marketing yeah. compared to what they've invested in the, in the Moon Watch. So if this is not a, as large of a commercial success, which it will not be, and they know that, right. that is because you, you get out what you put in. It's, it's really, as simple as that. Like they've been ignoring this model in a very real way on, on communication and on marketing 100%, for a long time. 100%. So that doesn't mean this is a failure. If they sell, I don't know what the numbers is. I, numbers are. I don't understand the projections. I, I would have really no of idea course. how to how to get there with 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 the little information we have. Yeah. Um, but with with proper market research, I think they'll have a better understanding here. It will be a fraction of the moon swatch, but I think it's going to do wonders for 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 Blancpain. I think that Blancpain yes, yes. is maybe, you know, this is the beginning of a bit of a resurgence for the brand. I saw people posting for the first time in a long time photos of their 50 Fathoms today, watches that they bought because of logic, right? A 50 Fathoms yeah. at $15,000 is is a lot better than a Submariner in quality. Yes. And it's also different and it's interesting. But because there's not much storytelling about the 50 Fathoms, because this watch group doesn't really create a culture around it, like Rolex has with the Submariner. Yeah. Suspicion that a lot of Fifty Fathoms owners end up having those watches in their box, not wearing them as often as they should. You don't get, you don't romanticize it at all. You're not romanticizing it, exactly. and that's the fault of of the Swatch Group. Okay, yeah. so yeah. I think that, and, and I saw it today on Instagram and, and all over on Facebook, people posting Fifty Fathoms today and saying, "Took this one out today." Like, and I and I yeah. know that that some father fathers all over are going that own Fifty Fathoms already. Yeah, are going to buy a buy a little 50 fathom swatch for their sons or their daughters and then they're going to say well this is we're a blanc family now exactly this is that's such, special this is the second 
ver- iteration of funneling everybody, uh, making basically like a growth thing. Being like, okay, well, I, I wore the moon swatch for a year. Love that. I'm saving for the Speedmaster. Same thing here, 50 fathoms. This is more of a swatch flexing than Omega flexing because it's like, yeah, I love that watch. Yeah. I wore my plastic watch all the time, and now there's like a legacy one. There's an, mm-hmm. an insane one. That, I think, is genius. The next thing is, is if this does work, I, again, it's hard to define success. I don't know what that looks like, but but if it if it works, and, I, and I'm sure it will, yes. okay? Yes. I'm sure this will sell millions and millions of dollars, and I'm sure it will do wonders for Blanc Pan, and I hope that all the opportunities that come of a product come as a product of this are taken advantage of, and nothing is, you know, nothing is left on the table. This is an incredibly and cool watch. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. But if this is, if this is, proven that, that that this works, right? That Swatch can do an interesting collab with the Swatch company, with the Swatch watch brand, and another Swatch group brand, right? Like the list we've got here, here's the chart, okay? Yes. If Swatch can prove that this is the second time, and with a much smaller brand, now kind of proving the concept, the Omega could have been a fluke. Exactly. But if it worked with the Blanc Pond again, okay? Not only is Swatch, has Swatch really found and, and proved that they've got this mouse trap that every year brings in an extra $300 oh, million, yeah. dollars, which is awesome. Yeah. But they've also proven that this strategy like, can kind of work with any brand. And we can we can bring new interest in and get major media pre- like press it's, for any brand, and whether it be Breguet or Glasshood Original or whatever. We we have a captive audience. We have a proven track record. We've done a good job twice, and it's made us hundreds of millions of dollars. It's and making it money and promoting, exactly. and it has this effect where I don't know how you view Longines. I love Longines, but love if you them. don't, and a spirit a Zulu timer comes out in Swatch. All of a sudden, Longines is like the cool older brother. You're like, 100%. wow, that's huge. Like 100%. that is super cool. So you, like we said before, a while ago, you can now theoretically, in ten years, five years, whatever, go to the Swatch store and see every brand's Swatch version. Totally, that's great. Totally. And you don't have to even think about it because if you, if the Longines one appeals to you, it's the same movement in the Fifty Fathoms. Yep. So you're like, oh, I like that styling better. Instantly pushes you to launch totally, it. and we don't even know. I mean, these brands could you know, end up pushing vintage too. I mean, you yeah, know, you could yeah. end up because yeah. If, if, let's look at launching for example, right? If they if they do like a predictable answer would be the 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 diver, right? The legend diver, the two crowns. Sure. a great watch. One of Longines' yeah. best watches. One of the best watches. That would be nothing. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. But now you've done the moon swatch. You've done the uh, moon watch. You've done the Blanc Pond Fifty Fathoms, and you've done the Longines diver. We're all sports watches, but you you don't know where else they could go with this. They can right. go any direction, right? Especially Swatch, right? They can do a conquest. You just don't know, right? Yeah. So I, I think this is amazing. I'm very excited. I, I think this will be a huge success on Saturday, and um, and I'm excited for Blanc Pond. They, they 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 deserve it. I think that they deserve success, and and I hope that they get it. Final note. I, w- I want to get your thought on this this idea or this thought. Yep. We see Blanc Pond is a very successful brand already, or you know they have beautiful boutiques and stuff mm-hmm. like that. They're definitely not dying or anything. So there is obviously a handmade Blanc Pond, very fancy Blanc Ponds, 15,000, 50 fathoms, mm-hmm. I should say specifically. There's Torbs, there's limited editions, there's different sizes and everything like that. We have that price. Mm-hmm. Now we have Swatch at $400. What happens when Swatch Group is like, so we're missing the middle ground. We do not have a middle ground here right now. Omega, you're 8,000, you're 9,000, whatever it may be. Like, you guys need uh, you need an approachable yeah. one here. Doesn't have to be Speedmaster. No, we need it close because now we need to build up. I don't know if they'll ever hit eight thousand. I could see them going around ten. I mean, you know, you've you've got the Bathyscaphe, which is the more approachable, more affordable uh, uh, fifty fathoms. Um, it's a it's a beautiful watch. I like it quite a bit. Of course, uh, and I do think it's a really good Rolex. You know. Submariner comp. It's a close comp, and, sure. and it has a lower entry point compared to the fifty fathom standard, which is like fifteen and goes up, goes up, right? Fifteen thousand, kind of an entry. Yeah, level. right, right. I wonder if eleven was still a little high, and if eleven with a different design, right. a strikingly different design, or if really. 10 one should have been the price mm-hmm. and really just have a Samariner competitor, you know, uh, anyone that's in the Rolex boutique can walk over to Blanc Pond and, and they already have to get over the fact that they're buying a brand that isn't as famous or isn't as, or isn't as just popular or isn't, doesn't get the clout. Right, right. But now knocking down the price jump as well, like that's 10%. Like it's not nothing. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's 10% more money. Um, you can't really lower prices in the watch industry because that's a really bad, it's a really bad look. Yeah, I right. do think the bad, the scalp pricing uh, is, is off. I do think that it's off. Mm-hmm. Um, but 
not by much, but probably by enough where it's not strategic. People I think it see probably it like, was oh. wrong. Yeah. You know? Because that, that's what I run into. The Swatch group as a whole was very, and it is very careful. We don't mix Longines and Omega prices. Right. That doesn't make sense. You're going to start butting heads. But what happens when you're like, there is so much money left on the table from the Omegas, from the Blanc Ponds, yeah. because of your price range and because of how you do things. And nothing is showing us that yeah. more than when we release something at $400. Because mm-hmm. all of a sudden, you're not competing. Longines would be competing with Omega, but with different lines. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that could implode yeah. the model. It's interesting. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't see Blanc Pond investing in, in, in kind of low, in creating a, a more affordable offering. I don't see yeah. it happening. I don't see Blanc Pond doing it either. Uh, yeah. I don't see Swatch making them either. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but, you know, I think that, I think that what they're going to come to terms with, I, I think, mm-hmm. uh, is when you're not the standard, when you're not the Rolex, yeah. right? You've got to, you've got to be, you know, a little bit more detailed and fun. And, you know, like the blue 50 Fathoms, I think is an interesting watch. And that's a, it's a great watch. And it's better than the Submariner for a reason. But they don't offer the Submariner in blue, right? So this that's kind of a fun little thing. And yeah. I think that the it no sounds rad stupid, is but, incredible. But yeah, those are more expensive and those are limited, but yeah, you're right, yeah. it's incredible. Um, but, you know, I think that if Blancpain had more fun with their 50 Fathoms, that would be very healthy for the brand. I agree. The same way they are at 400, they can they can have more fun at 15,000. Yeah. People, I just like, see... Buy it. I see the 50 Fathoms as a gold mine if it was more approachable. Not to say that it's not right now, it's but expensive. I see it as, as something where I can get it and the price is more approachable. It would just be like, oh, my, well, how can I get that other watch? Look at the No Rad. It's right. crazy. Right. Look at this watch. It's crazy. Right. That to me. It's also large. Like these watches are large, yeah. which is which definitely cuts off a big portion of the market. I mean, the Bathyscaphe, I think, is only 41, so it's it's smaller and you know, yeah, yeah, it yeah, makes, yeah. makes a little bit more sense. Um, but um, listen, they're, they're, they're off to something here. They've, they've definitely got something, and I'm excited for them, and I hope the lines are incredible. I hope that the Swatch Group makes a ton of money, not for them because they don't need more money. Who cares? Right. But for the Blanc Pond brand, I think that it's a beautiful brand that deserves to have recognition. And, and that's who I'm pulling for really here. I would agree. That's it. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. If you liked it, go and like the video, subscribe to our channel if you want more watch content. And if you want even more watch content than that, then go subscribe to our podcast over at The Zero. Link is down below. Um, yeah. If you sign up, shoot me a DM. I'd love to chat about watches with you. Yeah. I'll see you over there.